No, Tony, Tony's music was much more heavier and much more uh, driven. I, I was more vocally, more soulful. Uh, you know, we, we, when we started Trade Light, it, it was the other end of the spectrum. So you would have the, the hard house on, on the main floor. And then Trade Light started off in a small room upstairs with the Sharp Boys and then progressed to down, downstairs into the new part of Terminals and then the bigger rooms. And then it became really popular. So it became a battle between us and the main floor. Oh, there was always there was always this air of uh, distance between me and Tony. Always, you know, because th there wasn't room for two Tonys at trade. Do you know what I mean? There was Tony Devitt and there was Fat Tony, and and you know, so there was always that air of distance. And you know, and I was I was a nasty queen in those days. I would, you know, I would slag everybody off. I remember there was this one time I just signed this big deal and um, with this group that I had called Fierce Child and. We uh, had a really successful first single, and the second single uh, kind of was done over in two days, you know. And I, I, I it, was, it was shit, but uh, it, you know, I was assigned to a free, free, free single deal, and I went to Tony and asked Tony if he'd remix it, and uh, he said no, fuck off. And I was just like, oh right, but he didn't say it to me; it said it to the record company because they, they were dealing with it. So I remember them saying to me, basically, oh, he doesn't want to do it. And I was fuming, fuming. I kept calling him at his studio and he wouldn't answer the phone. And, uh, and then they finally got through and they were like, oh, he's not here. And I could hear him in the background. So I thought, right, I'll wait. And so then on the Saturday, I, I'd been somewhere. I think I'd been in Cardiff or somewhere like that. And I, I, was, I was charged and I got back to London. And I stormed into the DJ box. And I was like, what the... What's the pro what the FNL is your problem? Blah blah blah. And I remember him just like looking at me. Going, I don't know what you're on about. Get out. And in those days, it had a lock on the DJ box, and they were trying to push me out. And I was like ready to beat him up. It was just the most stupidest of dramas. Yeah, he he became massive in such a short time. But you know what? He his success was so so fast. At that point, you know, it had been around for so long, and suddenly it just went boom. Because he played good music. He knew he was a master of his art. You know, and he was a grafter. And, and that's one of the most important things about life. You know, in today's day and age where we have social media and we have everything's done by thumbs, you know, anyone can be, think that they're successful because they have so many different followers on Instagram or whatever. In those days, you had to graft. You really had to graft. And he was a grafter. And he was really good at what he did. I kind of just think it's about time that someone did a documentary on him. You know, it's... We've, we, we've, we've had the 30 years of Acid House. We've had everything else going on. You know, I get asked quite frequently to do, go and do interviews about back in the day stuff, but no, no one's ever done anything on Tony DeVitt. And, and you know what? If it wasn't for Tony DeVitt now, modern, that modern music, the way it is today, wouldn't be the way it is.